What's up, y'all? This is Sean Stockman, and you know I got soul. Chill. All right, you know I got so very excited to be here with Sean Stockman of the legendary group Boys to Men. How's it going, Sean? How you feel, man? Happy to be here. I'm doing good. So much history to talk about, but I want to first off talk uh, talking about your new single that you just dropped, "Feeling a Little Something." Mm -hmm. Talk about the creation of that song a little bit. And what's it all about? Uh, feeling this, feeling a little something was written by myself and and Tim Kelly, uh, someone I've known for a long time, someone who's. Uh, done a lot of music for my group boys to men and uh we collabed on this particular for this this most of the album actually my own you know my solo album and um feeling a little something is a smooth banger that's what i like to call it it's a smooth banger that like it you, you can kind of chill you can ride in your car with you can hang out and you know, you can get ready for the club. You can get ready for the, for dinner. You can get ready f to hang with the lounge at the lounge with your friends. And uh, but as far as the lyrical content, it's just basically a, a short story about a man envisioning this woman uh, to be his lawfully wedded wife. And that's pretty much how it is. It's just done in a slick, with a slick background with that beat. And that's pretty much what it is. Right. Now, talk about your partnership with Tim, Tim Kelly a little bit, because, um, you know, you guys have done work in the past together. Mm -hmm. um, yes. You've been up dating back to your second album with Boys to Men. Yeah. So talk about how that relationship has formed over the years. Uh, the second uh, album that Boys to Men made is where uh, Tim and the group met, and uh, we instantly hit it off. We had the same musical tastes and uh, creative uh, philosophies and things of that nature, so... Um, Again, we hit it right off, and we've known each other that long, over 20 years, and uh, we've always kept in touch. I mean, we've, we've pretty much uh, done our own things uh, during the years. Tim has produced a slew of hits for other people, and we've done our thing for, you know, with Boys to Men. And um, this whole solo idea, which presented, was, was presented to me, it was presented to me by Tim um, to sign with SRG Records, and... Um, I thought it was the best time, the great, the, 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 it was, it's all about timing in life. And I thought this was the best time for, uh, for me to embark, you know, embark on this whole journey that I'm on right now. Right. It's funny on Instagram, Tim's been telling us that, uh, he's been trying to convince you to, to get work on a solo. Deal. Yeah. Yeah. Record for a minute. So yeah, it's, it's been a minute. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah. what made you finally realize it was um, time? It, it's just funny how certain, when, when certain things happen in your, in your life, personally and career wise and uh just certain directions tend to take you to certain points and as i said i i felt like this was just the right time to do it right now you guys have done work in the past like i said 50 candles one of the earlier records you and him yes. did together so what's that creative process like now versus then is it very similar yeah it's very similar um tim normally will come with a track and possibly a hook idea in certain cases and then i would write the rest and then that's pretty much it it's, it's very simple it's not uh hard or or rigorous at all we feel it we go through music we we, we pick what we feel and and we go with that right now uh back in late 90s early 2000s vision of a sunset you had released that um and of course that did very well a lot of fans were really anticipating a solo album then um what were your plans then when you had dropped that song was that more so just for the soundtrack or yeah other intentions? I, I, it, it was literally just for that soundtrack I, I had no other intentions to do any further projects on my own that was just something that kind of fell in my lap and and i didn't even write the song for myself i, I wrote it with celine dion in mind and uh i sang the demo and it was actually Wanye's idea to basically say, yo, man, you should just keep that and sing it yourself. I was like, okay, cool. <laughs> and um, it was, I'm glad I did because a lot of people fell in love with it, and I, and I thanked them for that. Right. At that time when you had put out that record and you got the response that it did, was that new to you? Because all you knew at that point was just being in It was very new. Yeah. Um, to garnish that level of, of success and, and notoriety on my own was something pretty cool. And, and it, it almost... I think that was one of the reasons, it was one of the reasons why I felt like, man, it'd be cool to possibly do a solo record, but it was almost one of those fleeting thoughts. It was like, ah, whatever. Yeah. <laughs> and I kept it moving. Right. 
Um, now, I think it's really interesting in terms of your the timing of all of this because Boys to Men, at one point, you guys were the face of music, essentially, and then you guys went through a transitional period. Yeah. Uh, period. Now you guys are at that point where you guys are, you know, you guys have established your legacy. Mm-hmm. How important was that for you to wait until all of that cleared up? Because a lot of times when things go bad, someone could just jump ship and go solo, but yeah, you waited true. it all out. It's true. Yeah, because we understood that during that transitional phase that we were better as a group than we were as individuals. And um, it, we were better as a whole. So we weathered the storm. We went through a lot of things that we went through. We still kept our wits about us and we helped each other do that um, because we knew it was a turbulent time. And, and uh, once things started to settle, which is pretty much now, and it just gave us the freedom to do these individual things and stuff like that. And you'll see the individual things, whether it's music or otherwise, from the rest of the guys too. Right. I think it's really interesting because a lot of the artists that I grew up listening to, they're kind of at that phase in their career now where they're trying to figure things out. Yeah. Um, and I feel like a lot of them are kind of lost right now. And you've been through all of that and you've managed to overcome it. You guys yeah. do a residency in Vegas now. Yeah. So just talk about you know, that time period and what made you guys overcome that or what helped you guys overcome we, that. What, what, overca- what made us overcome it was our faith in God, our faith in each other, um, our will to want to make things work. And not to mention we felt like we had something. We had good records. We had good songs and people loved them. So we felt like in its purest form, if we continue to give that to them, people will eventually come around. Cool. And, you know, with that transitional period for a lot of people, that's when groups start breaking up. Um, But you guys stuck it together, stuck it out together for the most part. Um, What's the advice that you would give? Like, there's some groups right now, like 112, they're going through. Yeah, I heard about that. And that's really sad. Yeah. Um. It, it every every situation is different right. but i look at a group relationship like a relationship with your significant other there's got to be levels of reciprocity understanding humility and commitment right. if you want to make it work you will find a way to make it work no matter what so i i would say that if, if you guys really want it if 112 really wants it They'll find a way. There's nothing that bad that you can't overcome and come to some sort of compromise. Right. Exactly. Good point on that. Now let's talk. Let's go back to your solo project for a second. Mm-hmm. You know, you've had so much success with Boys to Men. You guys have had your multi platinum, lots of records sold. How mm-hmm. do you measure the success of this solo project? Is it more for fun? <laughs> there is no measure. I mean, first off. Boys and Men has a 26-year head start. Exactly. And I just started. So um, there's really no comparison. And, and the endeavor of doing this isn't for me to outdo what I've done. I won't do it. I know I won't. But um, I just wanted to see what else can come of the creative process. Because you never stop creating. And this is just my way of, of, of doing the alternative and um, seeing how far it takes me. Good point. Now, let's talk about your album a little bit. You know, we had talked about it off camera for a bit. What can mm-hmm. people expect? Is it very similar to what you had done with Boyz II Men? Because you wrote on a lot of Boyz II Men yeah. as well. Um, um, but, you know, you're working with one producer now as opposed to... Right. Uh, well, I, I worked on a couple with a couple of producers on this record. Okay. Um, the album's called Sean, small s. And um, it, it's, uh, it's what... It's almost like me saying, hello, how are you? My name is Sean. I didn't want to go to eclectic as far as the creative process. I kept it in my wheelhouse that is most comfortable and what felt most natural for me, which is R&B, love songs, and things of that nature. And as you know, I worked with Tim Kelly. Uh, Raphael Sadiq um, did one for me as well as Antonio Dixon. And that was it. Those are the only producers I... I, I uh, uh, did songs with and and I did some myself and I, I didn't want to um, fill it with a bunch of other people's ideas and things of that nature because I wanted the body of work to have a, a, a level of consistency creatively. Cool. Now you know, speaking of 112 and all these other groups that came from the 90s, they were so heavily influenced by you guys as they were coming up. So I'm just curious, at that time when they were making their way 
how did you feel about them? Because you could kind of see a mirror reflection of yourself mm-hmm. in them. So how did you feel about them then as opposed to, you know, them coming up? And how do you feel about it now knowing that you have such a huge influence I thought it was great. That's what it's about. Yeah. That's what it's all about. I mean, we were influenced by New Edition and Belle Bib DeVoe right. and all those guys. And we were fortunate enough to work with them. So it's flattering to me, like, it, to the fact that people look at our music in, in, in such a high esteem. And these guys are no joke. They're, they're great artists. So for me to feel, to, to be rather directly or indirectly responsible for uh, helping to create those groups, it's an honor. Right. Now, you've seen it all in your 20 plus years in the industry with R&B and how it's changed over time mm-hmm. and how it's evolved. Where do you see R&B going from here? Um, R&B actually went through a... a identity crisis it it was trying really hard to stay current and hip-hop was such a dominant force that a lot of r&b artists felt like they had to to put it plainly become hip-hop and it changed the the feel and the initial and original sentiment that r&b gave um, that people loved and still love. And you see that now more than ever with uh, her and Daniel Caesar and right. Sabrina Claudio and Amber Mark and all these other artists who sound very similar to the R&B of old. Right. And these are younger kids and the kids are getting into it, which is what I love. I love the fact that uh, R&B is getting back to its roots. Now, Sean, I read an interesting article just today. Research shows that uh, most people by the age of 30, they stop searching for new music. Um, mm-hmm. So, And you just mentioned all these new artists, which, you know, to, you know peop- most people at your age, they're probably not searching for these right. artists. So what keeps you motivated to keep looking for new music? Because it's tough. There's so much out yeah. there. Yeah. Well, music is my life. Right. And I'm forever a student. Right. And I am aware that uh, we all change, we all evolve, and music evolves. So in order for me to understand the landscape of the business that I'm in, I have to research, I have to look, I have to find, I have to uh, like, I have to dislike, I have to all, do all of those things in order for me to keep my identity fresh and and uh, authentic. So yeah, people normally my age normally don't do that. Um, but... Um, there, there comes a, a, a time where even people in my age, if, if the music is good, they will look for it and they will find it. So, and, and I feel like this album is, and, and my records are going to bridge the gap, so to speak, because a lot of younger artists still look up to us and, uh, uh, and, and artists my age and audiences my age know who we are still. So it's something for everybody, which is what I always wanted. Cool. And then lastly, I just want to point out uh, one of the saddest songs of all time. And uh, actually, my favorite voice to men song, Doing Just Fine. <laughs> and you did that one. Yeah. You wrote it. Just yeah. talk about the creation of that song. Um, it's, it's pretty self-explanatory. When you go through a really bad breakup and you thought that you'd never be able to get over it. And you found the strength spiritually to overcome that hurdle right. and doing just fine a, is written with the inspiration for those of of, of, of those moments rather right. um, of feeling defeat and then finding that internal strength right. to literally not just get over that person but legitimately get over that person not yeah. just say it yeah. but to feel and to have the the conclusion within yourself right to say i'm done right i'm a better person now and you messed up right (laughs) because (laughs) you left probably the best thing that's ever going to happen to you yeah exactly now with a record like doing just fine you wrote the record you presented it to the group i assume so how does that dynamic work are they adding more stuff to it after you've written it um i mean wanya is going off at the end of that yeah 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 i mean we kind of kept the formula as boys to men as people know it um Wanye is the finisher and i come in the second verse and nate normally uh starts the first verse so um in writing that i kept that in mind knowing who was going to sing what 
and how and all those other things. Right. Yeah. Yeah, I, well, in this particular case, um, the harmonies were pretty much there. I kind of okay. laid out the blueprint. I, okay. I, I sang the whole demo, okay. and then the guys heard it. It was like, yo, we love it, and they knocked it out. So, right. yeah. Cool. You know, that's all that I've got for you, Sean. Is there anything you'd like to add? Um, thank you in advance and currently for those who have supported my solo effort um, thus far. Thank you very much. And uh, there's more to come. There's more music to come. There's more energy to exude out there. And uh, just keep an eye out. Um, I do have an IG page. I don't do social media, but I do have an IG page that's available for you to, to check out some images and tour dates and schedules and things. Because like I do plan on doing tour, you know, a little touring by myself and things of that nature. It's, it's Sean Stockman official. And... Um, it also has a fa Facebook page, the same name. And uh, again, thank you so much. Support me, support Boys to Men, um, because he is he is I, and I am him, and um, right. and that's it. Love.